Um, a couple of things before I start my talk. I have been very lucky, um, not just because I got a position in Australia, uh, but because I was not seeking um, applications or I wasn't applying to places where there was a structure to an application program. Basically, I'm lazy. I did not want to give any exams, so I chose Australia is my answer. I also say I was lucky because um, I, uh, I was lucky to be uh, mentored by a few people. I'm going to show you those people in the slide. And as I am an anterior hip surgeon predominantly based out of Mumbai, um, in my first anterior hip case, which was on the 22nd of February 2022 in Bombay, it took me six hours to finish that case. And the all those six hours, David Rodda, my mentor, was with me uh, for those cases. So like Nandan mentioned before, these lifelong bonds, they do exist. They do help you in transitioning to a new system, taking a new technique elsewhere. So it does all uh, you know, contribute to your development and betterment. So I'll just start off with a few um, disclosures. Thanks. So I work uh, as a consultant for these three firms. They have uh, no relevance to my current topic. These were my mentors. So my first year of fellowship uh, was in Sydney. I applied during my residency. I did not wait for my residency to complete. I'll tell you a little more about my journey and how I was even luckier to get into the program in the first place. But Sol or Suleiman was uh, the guy who taught me something known as superpath. Uh, you guys who pursue hip would want to know a little more about other techniques of doing hip replacements. And this was something I went for to Australia in the first place. So in my one year of fellowship, all I wanted to do was learn superpath, didn't care about anything else then decided to call back home and you know the, the suppliers of the instruments and realized that they had wound up operations in India in 2019. So that was a big bummer. Um, unfortunately, COVID happened, uh, but uh, I got stuck in Australia and I applied uh, for David Rodas fellowship position and that's what really changed the game for me. So I started doing anterior hips with David um, in 2020. I was a fellow with him until 2021 and 2021 to 22, I was a consultant at his practice. So my journey was just like every one of us. I did my DORT, finished in 2017. I finished my DNB in 2019, but even before I finished my DNB, I secured a fellowship position. So you do not need to finish your residency programs to pursue fellowships in Australia. Big plus. All right. So you can apply at any stage. Um, for guys who are noting down details, there's a QR code at the end of this slide. You can just take a photo of that. So you will have the whole presentation. It'll help you a lot. Um, luck didn't favor me in my DNB. I ended up having an argument with my examiner, uh, true to my nature. And I failed the exam by one mark, which was, uh, uh, which was a lesson to me. But I still got an opportunity to pursue this fellowship. So you do not need to have DNB or MS to pursue fellowships if you're backed up really well in your CV. So I'll give you those details as well. Now, why did I choose Australia? One, it was a very easy transition. Australia is a really accepting country and especially nowadays for Indians, it's very easy, very open to move to Australia. The diaspora is very used to the population of India. About 5 million Indians live in Australia. So it's just like home except not like home. Um, Orthopedics in Australia is really nice. It is a very good level, not just arthroplasty, but sports and spine and tumors. There are dedicated institutes, which are the draining centers in different uh, states, and they do really well. And I also wanted to experience living in Australia. I have half my family, which is based out of Australia. So I thought, why not? Why not spend some time in Australia and see if I like it there? Um, the first couple of months in, in Australia were a bit of a struggle because you're accommodating not just to orthopedics, but also a new way of existing. So living life in a different country is also a lesson and it will be something that you will find it difficult to transition to. Honestly, Australia is very easy, you know, because English speaking, number one is a very big advantage plus a lot of Indians. So transitioning is not that tough. Systems are easy, but you still, you know, take a couple of months to find your feet. Second, when I started doing my fellowship, I was comparable to the fellows in Australia. So the local trained surgeons versus you. And when you get the knife in your hand, and if you've not used it in India, 
it shows and that's what was my case you know it showed in my first fellowship I got 12 hip replacements to do in my entire fellowship and I could not be disappointed about that because I really didn't know how to do super path I didn't know how to do a hip replacement surgery before going there so you have to be honest about your own skill sets before you sit into interviews and before you apply for these uh, positions whereas when it came to knees I ended up doing about 60 to 70 odd knees in my first year of fellowship which is, which is a great great start you know when you're doing five knees a month which is pretty good you get you get your hands running how I landed that uh, position is very interesting to to understand um, there is no structure to applying for a fellowship in Australia which has its advantages but it also has its disadvantages will which will be discussed so there was no mentorship there was no guidance and this is what I'm talking about 2019 now people know that there are ways to apply there are websites that you can go on to to apply which I'll mention next so uh, what I did was I sent individual applications to everyone on those websites and everybody kept saying no but I kept following them up and I kept asking them how I can make my life better and how I can get a position in those systems so after making those mistakes I realized that I really should not be trying to give them what I have but what they're seeking and that's where Dr. Kenny, Dr. Marate, everyone spoke about the, the importance of research in your CV no amount of recommendation obviously it is mandatory to have recommendations but unless it's a part of their system hold the same amount of value so recommendation from India works really well in India recommendations from Australia works really well in Australia but it does not you know skip continents so recommendations of India may not work the same way that an Australian recommendee would you know would, would help you uh, to gain a position so in your CV what really stands out is PubMed indexed research articles by the time I finished my residency I had 10 PubMed indexed research articles so I had I didn't do a lot of cutting but I did a lot of research so maybe something to work on that you know you should be you should be doing um, IELTS is the only exam that you need to give before going to Australia and which was the, the saving grace for me and the reason why I applied to Australia and not the UK or the US um, IELTS academics is what you have to give it's a fairly easy exam to give and it's a fairly easy exam uh, to score a seven band in what that does is once you give that exam you show your commitment to that position you show your commitment that you're keen to come so when you write your application letter these details stand UA fellowship and the Ames fellowship uh, directory there's another one my fellowships but it does not really have so many uh, good uh, you know uh, application um, um, institutes but the first two have a lot of them about a hundred of them so you can send in emails to all of them I would urge you to submit your applications as soon as you can uh, the applications are just letter of intent should have four or five paragraphs one introducing yourself two, what you did in your residency three what your targets are and four that you intend to come back you're gonna get a fellowship position in Australia if you intend to come back and they're gonna get you to sign that form because if you intend to stay there the cycle parallels what happens in the UK it's a Commonwealth country everybody has the same cycle so you're gonna invest five to seven years I know people who have got into the system and have be become orthopedic surgeons and are orthopedic surgeons uh, who have done their MS in India but if you're gonna commit five to seven years of your life training and not knowing where you're gonna end up for me it wasn't worth it okay so this is a very subjective choice but you know that's what that's what you have to really work on the paperwork as Nandan also mentioned uh, is tedious it's about six months of paperwork uh, all the documentation that happens in Australia is helped by those guys so you don't have to do anything you just have to pay the money and uh, all the documentation that happens in India is all your headache that starts from getting your MMC good standing certificates to your DNB good standing certificates or whatever the documents are so that takes a lot of time and everything there would require a little bit of effort on your part but generally three to six months is what you're looking at you get your visas and uh, you know you go home so basically there are two registering authorities in Australia um, APRA and RACS you don't need to get onto the details of either one of them you just need to get a certificate from them saying yes you can come to Australia all they check is if your med MBBS certificates are valid or not through the ECFMG registration portal which is standard for all countries uh, around the world now 
what my expectations were in my fellowship and what I got out of it is something that I think this is where the titration job begins right we have to understand that for us what we think is fellowships uh, gonna be fun and hunky and dory and everything is gonna be great I'm gonna start cutting it doesn't work that way you have to show your commitment because those guys really want to see if you're capable enough of jumping levels it's a different level of practice you need to have fun fellowships are great time and, and especially my time in Australia was probably the best time of my life uh, apart from working in Jupiter Hospital under Dr. Ashish Fadnis which is great um, but I got to I got to do a lot of skill acquisition but that just not that wasn't restricted to just orthopedics right I got to learn the business of orthopedics the art of orthopedics and that mentorship is something that you're seeking along with just cutting so understand that part of it and I think a lot of us really work towards establishing a practice and who don't come from a second gen orthopedic family these sort of things would really help you uh, from a system like Australia which is private and public so when you know how to deal with those patients there you bring the best give it to your patients and there is a distinction that's created and that that really benefits your practice as well uh, I also got to steal uh, in some cases and acquire in other cases a lot of protocols and some things that we're not good at uh, maintaining protocols so I have a protocol like a whole black book of all uh, the surgical equipments that I need for every case I can do to some extent about 45 surgical cases hip replacement, knee replacement, IT fractures, each one of them has my surgical protocols. I never had those protocols before, never had them in my residency, never was exposed to them. But in Australia, every surgeon has them and I could acquire it from them and I have it in my practice. So I operate as a freelancer all over Mumbai and I just have to take that book and say these are my requirements. So these are things, you know, small things that you really gain from uh, when you're, when you're in, a, in, a, in a fellowship which is wholesome. Um, I was a very responsible adult as you can see uh, on the on the left of your screen I had a five-day working week uh, which was OT um, OPD and wards uh, my ward uh, association was very limited because my uh, fellowship supervisors were like all right you don't need to put in as much effort into your ward you know you can talk you can communicate spend more time in your OT acquire those skills and that will elevate you so this is the rapport that you're able to build and especially with Australian surgeons they're generally very very chill so they're easy to communicate with uh, on calls are only in uh, public hospitals so I had fellowships which had eight hospitals that I was working at simultaneously with my bosses four of them were private where I was assisting them um, but four of them were public so I would go to the public hospitals I would operate there I would be the fellow there I would get my on calls and I would get paid for it as well I had an academic meeting which I hated which was at 6 30 in the morning every week but uh, I think we all have to do the, these things um, even out here um, again they're calling you there for what they can get out of you in those two years of fellowship I could publish three papers which is not great but considering the transition that you're going through and if you're still able to publish a few papers it's ideal so one a year is minimum but if you can publish a few more it's great now what are the cons uh, it's not all hunky and dory uh, like I mentioned before up a fellowship abroad you will you will straight where we come from and we all understand that all of us are not at the same standards because not all of us come from KEM or you know Nair or really good institutes I'm not from KEM I did not get the acumen that I should have in my residency and that really hits you in your fellowship so I think that understanding if you can have at this point it'll be great for your career I didn't have it I only learned it when I was there that hey you know what if I don't do a good job for them they won't let me cut so you know you have to learn on the job as well but nobody in Australia expects you to know a knee replacement or a hip replacement before getting there they expect you to at least know how to open get inside as, as they are sipping coffee in the second room so if you are able to do that and if you're competent to do that that's a good start for your fellowships in Australia once you get in they're gonna come in they're gonna be like all right go to the next stage and that's how you'll progress nobody's gonna handhold you but if you're able to prove yourself in these small manners doing a good draping being nice to everybody 
I think that really counts. The thing I struggled the most in my in my couple of years in Australia was even though that I, I really enjoyed my time in Australia was I felt like I was a foster dog. Uh, I felt like this was a great home but it was never my home. You know, and that's the feeling that you will have wherever you go if you're really fond of the systems out here. And once you overcome that and you finally fit into the systems, whether it's the UK, the US, Canada or Australia, you realize that those systems are really made for those people. And they are made really rock solid for you to get into. So having that understanding that it's at least in Australia that you will have to come back is, is a very good start. Because you're going to spend two to three years of your life, make a lot of money, save a lot of money, but you have to come back and work here. Because getting into their programs is a very difficult task. And at most, any Indian surgeon would get a, a surgeon would get a partial comparability. So there are three um, outcomes of your comparability testing. You've done your fellowship in Australia and you decide you want to be there and you want to stay there. You apply to RACS. And RACS says you have three options. Either you're uncomparable, you're partially comparable, or you're fully comparable. You're not going to be fully comparable in Australia because their basic requirement is you need to have a training course of four years minimum before you get full comparability. And there are other requirements as well, you know, so 300 cases in the past five years, whatnot. Um, so understanding that you're just going there for a fellowship for a couple of years and coming back is, is good for a start. Uh, these positions are now very competitive because everybody knows that now there are no exams to get into Australia. It's a little easier than going to the US or Canada or the UK. So everybody applies to Australia. So even the Europeans apply and generally they get a little bit of a preference ahead of us. Uh, it is what it is. So you should start applying though. That's, that's very important. Once you reach there, it takes about six to 12 months for, your, for you to really find your skill set, no matter what your subspecialty of choice is. Um, initial Investment is about 5 lakh rupees. You're going to spend at least 5 lakh rupees to land in Australia. Um, that requires all your documentation, which doesn't seem to be a lot of money, but for somebody like me who, who was just out of residency, it was a little bit of an investment. Um, almost all fellowships pay anywhere from 80,000 Australian dollars upwards, which is quite a decent amount to exist. If you reach 100 and 100 plus, you make enough money to save uh, when you come back home. And... Uh, Long-term prospects, as I said, um, opportunities are limited. Um, you guys will have to retrain if you move to Australia, but again, that wasn't a choice that I wanted to make, so I come back. I came back home. Um, my advice would be, by the time you've res ended your residency, you already know that there are two, three subspecialities that you're interested in, or if you're not out of Mumbai, and if you're out of some other part of the country, and you're going back to there is a void and there's a need, apply for those fellowship positions and then try to come back and pursue that subspecialty. Rejections are going to happen. I got 54 rejections before I got accepted for the first time, so I think it's a record. Um, this is a very independent place. You're going to have fun, but it's also where you start your practice. So consider your fellowship as a state where you're practicing independently, because in Australia, you will be considered an independent practitioner and you would get a license to practice. Um, Small things matter, um, individual emails, proper grammar, uh, grammar uh, CV, uh, and your research. Research is, is, is very important. 